Very good. Um, so, hi everyone. I'm okay, just uh, starting to present myself. I'm, I'm Alex Wisniewski and I'm the head of the program Global Feminism um, in the Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung. And I'm happy that you're uh, zooming in into this conference because I think it's a very important like moment to still keep organizing. And the debate I titled as uh, the Feminist International in Times of Corona. And of course, talking about a feminist international derives from this um, various feminist movements that we saw growing in the last couple of years and um, that are that we're building networks internationally and exchanging practices and shared common actions and above all i think the um the feminist uh, strike is one example but there are more um, but when we talk about a feminist international it's not the international we we know from history that is somehow organized um, with delegates, with parties and from above, but that's um, an international that is constructed from feminist practices in their uh, respective territories. And that are not, nonetheless, they are already including an internationalistic uh, perspective. And therefore, it's also an internationalism that is open for broad uh, participation. And that also uh, applies uh, today. Um, in a very new scenario for all of us, uh, I think where we are not only uh, locked down in our ho houses, but that we, in a time that we see uh, resurgence of uh, nation states, and um, so the objective of our debate today is an exchange of our feminist practices in our territories in this special moment and uh, beyond, like if, if there are already plans beyond, and also uh, on a, an international uh, level. And the objective is also to talk about possibilities and ideas on how people can get involved from their, from their uh, places where they are now. Um, so the uh, debate will last uh, for around 90 minutes and I um, suggest to divide it into two parts. Like a uh, first part where we um, talk about the uh, local practices about uh, what you are doing in in the countries you are in and then we have a uh, like the possibilities for questions and um, I will you can also write them in the chat and then I can also unmute you so um, you can talk and the second round we will talk more on the uh, initiatives we have on an international level. So with this um, first question on like the situation in, in, uh, in your countries and on the organizing you're doing um, in your movements, um, I'm giving the word to Alessandra. Oh, okay, sorry. I forgot to present the speakers from today. So um, we have Alessandra from Niuna di Meno in Italy. Um, there is uh, Daniela from the Women's Strike Network in Germany, especially she's based in the local group in Frankfurt am Main. And we have Javiera from Chile, organized in the Coordinadora Ocho M. And I'm... Um, very happy that you all here and I give the word to Alessandra it should yeah yeah thank you Alex uh, and thank you all for this invitation I'm uh, pretty happy to be here to talk with uh, with you 
Um, actually, uh, in Italy, as the, um, the virus started to spread, we were in the very, in the very last weeks before, before uh, um, the women's strike on 8 March. So, of course, so the first thing we did was to, to cancel the, the demonstration and the protest. And, of course, we started uh, probably uh, earlier than other, uh, than other uh, countries to think about how to, how to face this uh, incredible challenge of, of uh, the coronavirus and, what, um, <coughs> and all the, <laughs> the, the, the consequences. Um, surely, um, we uh, discussed it on, on, on a national level, and we also produced a, a document in order to um, to to highlight how this uh, uh, this uh, pandemic, uh, on the one hand, uh, is. Um, Make um, made it uh, uh, clear, clearer, and probably uh, deepened uh, the um, some problems that we had also uh, also before in terms of uh, healthcare system uh, in the neoliberal uh, neoliberal cuts so on uh, on the welfare and uh, on uh, um, in terms of uh, uh, sexual division of labor and uh, reproductive labor, but at the same time also created. The new forms of um, exploitation and oppression that we are trying to deal with, and uh, um, so uh, the point that we um, we tried to 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 underline is exactly how the specific condition and the specific situation the women have to have to live in uh, the context of quarantine and social and social isolation uh, uh, maybe um, maybe uh, also. Um, of course, uh, uh, worse than than uh, um, in, in in the society, but also how uh, how, uh, as, how we um, in uh, um, on a transnational level with the women's strike uh, addressed this specific uh, condition, uh, anticipating in 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 in, in, in some uh, in some uh, ways that the, this. Uh, um, the transnational uh, plan of this pandemic and this crisis. So, first of all, uh, in terms of uh, how uh, social isolation and um, and uh, quarantine um, strengthen the, the 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 main violence uh, against women, the domestic violence and uh, gender-based violence. Uh, moreover, also how um, the, the the very um, connection between uh, between the the production and the social reproduction. So how the the the, the issues of uh, the reproduction of society and who is actually um, um, entitled and. <laughs> um, Forced to uh, to uh, to wage it um, has to also uh, is also who in the productive system occupy um, the, some positions that are quite specific that are uh, the one on which we we uh, we say we have uh, have seen the the the, the struggle between uh, essential and non and the non essential uh, jobs who is forced to go to work who is um, and who is allowed to stay home and how people and women specifically uh, have to stay home in, so um uh, of course the the, the what um, what we tried to do in a very um, in a very uh, strong uh, way is to um, to let uh, the space um, open the space of the women that the women strike uh, uh, op uh, opened uh, three day, uh, three years um, three years ago and so trying to connect with the, all the uh, different forms of uh, insurgencies so that um, that uh, uh, spread that uh, among the country, uh, so uh, spontaneous spontaneous strikes and uh, uh, forms of protests, for example. Um, 
asking, uh, uh, demanding not to uh, not to be forced to go to work or uh, to uh, put um, profit over over lives, um, and uh, also to uh, or in which forms, of course, the 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 question the the issue issue of the um, of working from home working at home uh, um, that is the what we call the smart working uh, uh, is uh, uh, deepening the problem of the uh, of the uh, how women have to work for in for double like uh, um, because they have to they have children uh, at home from school because school are closed but at the same time they have to work from home and so uh, how to deal with this and how actually the the um, the reproductive the, the social reproductive costs of 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 this problem uh, um is is being paid by women and their and their exploitation um but also in terms of uh, uh, care workers and uh, um, how and, and migrant uh, migrant women who uh, whose uh, uh, precarity has been also um, uh, worsened by this crisis in terms of uh, uh, not uh, not being sure of having of having a job but also having a place to stay and a residence permit and also the the um, um, the, the um, uh, enclosure of borders, uh, how uh, it impacted on on uh, the mobility of uh, of workers and women workers, and how also it. Uh, um, it, it can be also suspended in terms of having a certain type of workers. For example, now the, the, quest, the, the, um, the issue is about agricultural workers or, uh, or the need for agricultural workers that, that, have, to, that have to work in the, in, the, in, the, in the farms. And so how actually the capitalistic, <laughs> the capitalistic organization of society is uh, just uh, um, taking advantage of the crisis in order to um, select which one is allowed to to enter uh, the country and so trying to um, to to govern the, the 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 mobility of people and the freedom of movement in terms of how is possible to exploit uh, more uh, in, a, in a more intensified way uh, the the labor the labor force. So uh, of course uh, uh, these uh, mm, these uh, connection between life reproduction uh, uh, reproduction of life or the refusal of being uh, uh, put um, of being exploited with the with the uh, command of, uh, of cave work uh, uh, and also how um, social isolation put in uh, in in question the very uh, the very moment of the public visibility of of uh, women uh, taking the streets, uh, taking the the, 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 the the taking the squares uh, during uh, the, um, the demonstration. So uh, these are the things that we are trying to uh, to uh, to discuss and to face in order to give our uh, to our um, to our action and our organization a uh, wider and more articulated. Uh, um, discourse and also uh, practices of course uh, yeah of course uh, um, physical um, the, the, the question is that actually even if uh, uh, the women's right couldn't uh, take place in our country we had um, individual or uh, um, forms of um, the, of uh, refusal um, in in uh, in uh, in, in, in um, relation to uh, neoliberalism, uh, neoliberalistic society and uh, uh, patriarchal and racist uh, uh, exploitation and uh, oppression, and uh, that. Um, for example, in the logistics sector, in the warehouses in the northern part of Italy, or also 
in other in other um, in other on in other um, workplaces that uh, um, put uh, put the, the the question of um, deciding to stop the production with the, with the complete lockdown uh, even if uh, some some uh, works that uh, were considered by the government as essential works uh, uh, were uh, allowed to to, to run uh, and uh, now uh, what we um, uh, event eventually have to uh, to to understand and to and also to uh, to struggle is exactly how this time of transition uh, that, that we are living uh, um, is uh, um, actually creating the condition of new forms uh, of uh, dominion and oppression uh, against women but also against uh, uh, against migrants and against uh, um, industrial workers and precarious workers so um, what we should do probably is exactly uh, the one, on the one hand uh, trying to to stay in these times and to um, address um, and uh, also anticipate what is going on, but at the same time trying to um, gain the to gain the visibility, the communication, and the uh, and the uh, political political efforts uh, in order to be able to struggle when it when the new normality with the, the when this pandemic will uh, will become a, a new will end in a new, in a new uh, normality. And I don't know if I have uh, more time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That we are uh, exactly ten minutes. So uh, very good. I just have um, <laughs> I myself Maybe have we can discuss some more after. Yeah, I just um, have one uh, one question because you mentioned that you had like so called uh, individual forms of refusal the eighth of March because yeah, like you mentioned, Italy was uh, one of the countries who couldn't have this 8th of March like it uh, used yeah. to be. So could you give an example for what did you do? Well, for example, we had uh, seek out used uh, in order not to go, uh, not to go to, to, to work uh, or uh, um, other, um, yes, this kind of uh, individual, I, I'm not talking about the 8th of March, um, I'm, I'm talking about the the, the time of uh, when uh, when uh, the the coronavirus uh, uh, started to spread in a very quickly way in the northern part of Italy and then in the rest of Italy. Uh, but of course, it was uh, it was um, um, a tactic we can say of 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 struggle in the very moment in which it was uh, um, it was. Uh, um, Decided what was uh, what to do uh, between Confindustria, that is the the, the main organization of uh, bosses in Italy of industrial of indust um, industrial uh, um, comp and companies and uh, uh, and workers who were uh, actually uh, not <laughs> not uh, disposable to put uh, at risk their very life just in order to have a uh, um, a very, uh, uh, you know, just a, a monetary compensation for it that is always uh, low and uh, and, uh, and not enough to to to, to do it. And uh, uh, yes, this uh, this is the main. Uh, the, of course, we are using a lot uh, uh, social media uh, in order to. To, uh, for example, there is a, a nationwide campaign for abortion uh, access to uh, the abortion pill uh, in order not to be, um, not to have to, to, to go to the hospital to, to get uh, uh, an abortion. And uh, this is a, um, an opportunity also for something that we have been, uh, that we have been uh, talking about uh, also in the in the previous years so that is not the non medicalization of abortion and then the non um, in, in order to to avoid this uh, um, 
this uh, uh, role of the of the state and of the of the doctor uh, uh, in which uh, in which space the, the um, of course the pro life uh, association and lobbies play can can play a role in order to uh, to not allow women to get it um okay yeah <laughs> yeah thanks no uh thanks a lot i just um would um go directly to javiera and um like uh put the same questions to you okay um well i am very happy to be here and to be able to be having this international meeting and in times like this it's we think the most important thing we can do is actually being um, um, being able to to grow our international um, networks precisely because we think that feminism has that potential. I'm going to talk a little about uh, what is for us uh, having this um, well, this pandemic crisis in, in a context uh, such as Chile, where we are having this crisis in the middle of a revolt, in the middle of a um, government with um, a state terrorism, and also in a context, as you might know, might know uh, which is this country of a, like a neoliberal oasis, as it's, it's been well known. So, um, First of all, uh, yesterday we were actually writing this um, piece of uh, column because we are, yesterday was 8th of uh, April, so a month from the general feminist strike. Um, but for us it was very important. We had a strike that was uh, actually the most um, massive mo uh, manifestation here in Chile since since the end of dictatorship, you might know that the last year's strike was as well as big as a was as well that had that um, com historical um, component. Then uh, the 18th of October was the this like general um, revolt here in Chile started, and this 8th of March was uh, actually very important for us because it was a, a sign of the continuity of this revolt from the feminist movement. So uh, we were two million actually uh, in the streets. So then, and just a couple of days after that, the um, um, sanitary emergency was like arose here in Chile. So then it was like absolutely the, the contrast between, of course, being such and in, not only in Santiago but all over the country to uh, being isolated in our homes. It's it's like. Uh, um, it's uh, a major contrast in, a, in every sense, uh, personal and of course, uh, economically, socially, politically. Um, well, to give a, a, some um, context of our situation here in Chile, we are, as you might know, in the middle of a revolt that started the 18th of October and it's been like the most important revolt uh, that has happened here in Chile since the end of the dictatorship. Um, a revolt that we we, uh, we think of it as a major revolt against the precarization of life in a very um, wide notion of precarization, not only in the sense of a uh, labor precarization, but also in the ways of our uh, daily life uh, of an economy that, of course, you know, uh, is a uh, precise example of uh, the politics of choc. Yes. Um, and so then uh, this major and amazing revolt that were uh, that we've been part of as Coordinadora Feminista 8M and as a feminist movement uh, was the, um, led to, uh, to the, the idea of transforming every single aspect of our lives and of course in a more and in an institutional level, the transformation and the uh, change of our constitution that you might know is was Chile is one of the countries in the only country in South America that has still the constitution of the dictatorship of Pinochet. So it was a major um, 
gain of this movement to be able to think of uh, the change they need the that we needed this change so but among other of course other things that we've been uh, pressuring for um, so then the the idea of having a pandemic crisis in the middle of a revolt has a lot of um, means a lot of things for instance we are having this pandemic this crisis in the context of a military of the militarization of our country one of the first uh, um, policies of this uh, of the government of Sebastián Piñera, even before the quarantine, was uh, to have a, um, a curfew, a militarized curfew. And we are still living on a, with a militarized curfew on most of our cities, in Santiago, in Valparaíso, in Concepción, among others. Um, we are also having this uh, context, o sea, this uh, sanitary emergency where uh, with um, political prisoners from the revolt. There, hundreds of political prisoners, very young political prisoners actually, uh, who are living these days or other in, their, in, in jails or in their houses, but going through this, um, uh, through the criminalization of the protests that we, we were like living just a couple of uh, weeks ago. And of course the impunity, the total impunity of the responsibles of what's being the, the systematic violation of human rights here in Chile. You might know that here, some of the major and most um, the massive uh, human violations that were that occurred during the past months um, had, among others, con um, consequences. That many there's a lot of people, more hundreds of people, who lost their eyes. Uh, hundreds of cases of uh, sexual assaults from the police and um, government agents, and. All, and also uh, cases of deaths. So it's a very, uh, we are living this like um, form of in, in how our government is in a way a, um, be able, being able to recuperate their power in a context where they had lose, lost a lot of uh, their, um, their support. Their, but in, uh, and now they're um, being able to gain it again in a context of total impunity. Um, but at the same time, so then we have this uh, uh, very um, dark context, but also the other thing is that the revolt had a major impact in the way in the social fabric here in Chile. You might, uh, it was very important, so how in every neighborhood and in most territories, communities, cities and towns, is assemblies and very, from below started to grow, started to uh, uh, help to make networks that, hadn't, that didn't exist before here. here. So uh, that's a very important thing because today one of our major uh, issues as, as coordinador is how to think these social net, these networks from below as networks of care, networks uh, of resistance, networks in which we can um, imagine the forms of political action even in this context of quarantine. Uh, that is very important because uh, some of the questions we can do and some of the uh, ideas of political action we can imagine nowadays were impossible in, if we had this uh, epidemic crisis without a revolt. And um, in third place, I wanted to talk about, of course, having this uh, emergency in a context of such a neoliberalized uh, um, economy. We have to know that here in Chile, our um, health system is mostly private, is uh, absolutely, so it's majorly privatized, and the public health is uh, absolutely precarious. So, uh, the, until today, we we're living in conditions that the health system is absolutely, uh, even though we haven't. So, uh, reached the um, climax of the contagious and the impact in our health, it's already uh, being uh, absolutely um, like uh, it, it has not like the capacity to reach the major the people who are needing not only because of the uh, virus but because of all the other you know uh, health issues. Um, we also have our Chile is a very uh, we have a major problem in debt. Uh, the debt has expanded to the payment of everyday life. People are have, have debt for going to uh, to buy things to eat, 
for health, education. So that's a major issue nowadays. How, uh, what are we going to do with it? all the debt that's like internalizing in our everyday uh, life? And of course, especially, um, and how women have to, um, how we live with the debt affects, of course, our decisions. And for us, it's important to think how it affects uh, our, the, uh, how can we, for, for instance, decide where or with whom to live. Um, and in a third, uh, as another very important issue is, of course, we are uh, in a very, um, in an extractive and, uh, economy, there are communities in Chile that have no access to water. So that's also a very important issue, how this affects uh, in a context where there are places where people can't have water to uh, wash their hands daily, uh, or with all the, the uh, or as much as it is needed. So that's, in a way, and just as uh, Alessandra said, this is a crisis that, um, brings light to a major and structural crisis of our lives and in the way it is organized and, uh, and how we produce and reproduce our, day, our lives. So for us, it's important to, in this um, context, context, think what are our, uh, uh, the capacity we have to, to bring a response as a movement and the way we can, in, make a call out for political and collective action. As Coordinadora Feminista 8M, we made a, an emergency plan, an emergency feminist plan. I can um, share with you the document. We have it in Spanish and in English. And it has like four major um, lines of action. The first is was a, a call out for, um, just as I said before, how the assemblies and the um, networks from below that we've been uh, that have grown through the revolt become uh, networks of care in this context and we are working in all the different um, neighborhood assemblies in which we are we are part of working on this idea on making um, networks of uh, care and mutual aid another uh, another line of action is that the we've been working with other feminist groups or NGOs and um, collective working on, a, on, a, on a, a network of a feminist network to confront the, the, um, the rise of um, patriarchal violence in, in context of confinement, of course, and that as I know in all of our countries has roused, roused like, uh, extremely. So we are already working on that to have like a first um, working on strategies, communicational strategies, but also in, in a first aid for people who need to, for women in this context. Um, it is important for us because the, as you might imagine, in a context, as I already said, terrorist uh, first, uh, state, uh, there's a lot of women who won't call the government or public uh, institutions for an answer in these cases, or non uh, they won't call, for, uh, for instance, the police, who both were important, like to sorry, like uh, first respond in other uh, context. And in a third place, we are uh, actually working on a we worked on um, a series of demands that uh, with a uh, common um, a, a theme that was our, our care over their uh, profits. Because we think that nowadays what we are living is a, a government that the major um, a, pol a measures are absolutely a, not only as absolutely neoliberalized and they are uh, intended to protect the um, business and multinational, uh, national and multinational businesses. So for us, it's important to think how care is a, a brings us a light to change the, what's uh, to, promote the idea that, for, for, of course, our lives and our care must be in the center of any policy or any uh, public response to the crisis. And to make this and notice, we've worked in, a, we've uh, 
uh, other organizations, other movements from the territories, other um, unions, and um, also students' movements on uh, the idea of the strikes for our lives. We are working on this as a form to um, to to demand to the government, of course, these demands, I'm going to share with you some of them. Uh, that's the idea that, of course, we not everybody can have a current, uh, um, a quarantine in the times uh, in in, a, in this context, and we are asking also for some uh, economic measures, uh, asking, for instance, also demanding that uh, they that people who with formal jobs must be uh, uh, keep their air, their um, their wages, which actually we are not. Uh, they're they're not paying wages, not even for formal workers. You can imagine what's the case for informal workers, where most of women are actually working. There's a absolute suspension on the payment of many of them, and we're also working on this idea that um, the the suspension on all debt payments and the suspension on the payment of um, uh, basic expenses such as light, uh, internet, actually in these times, uh, water. And for that, we're working on these like strikes for life. It's a productive strike, of course, we are not <laughs> because precisely reproductive uh, work is most intensively done in our homes, but yes, but productive strikes and also different forms of collective actions such as cacerolazos from our houses that uh, was very common during the revolt uh, in the streets. Cacerolazo, um, I'm going to try to translate that in, is like the banging of empty pots. Uh, and that, that makes a sound, a very like a, a strong sound that we are trying to, and we are doing that from our houses or from the um, windows to make this uh, common idea of a, of a um, revolt that is being held even from our houses. And we are also working these days uh, in, a, um, in this idea of how to think of how unions can, in, from a feminist perspective, can actually be start to, to gain uh, different forms of um, a network. We are working on a network of feminist unions or feminists in unions. And I can share with you some, that is something we are working on uh, for this 1st of May. Um, the idea is to, to understand the work in a more um, um, broader idea of work, not as only like productive work, but as productive and reproductive work, all forms of work, especially the most um, precarious works in which a lot of, uh, most of women are working now this year in Chile, uh, works, uh, and we're working on that nowadays to, because uh, it is important for us how the feminist movement can be part of every other movement and how can the feminist uh, movement can ch help to change some of um, some more traditional uh, places such as unions and how can it, this be held from a more democratizing perspective as well as uh, broadening, broadening the idea of work and how we can expand it uh, in our demands, but also in our collective uh, repertoires of action. Um, that I think that's, I wanted to. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot. Javiera, I, I already have a, a question, but I will um, ask later. I would um, just give the, the, Mike, so to say, to um, Daniela, and then maybe we can talk about that all together. So again, to the uh, to everyone in the call, um, you can like put in the chat if you want to ask something, um, if you have um, like question of if you if you want to talk 
to make a comment just after the input from Daniela. I... Can you hear me? Yeah. Wonderful. Cool. Um, this is Daniela speaking from Frankfurt Main in Germany. Uh, wonderful to be with you tonight. Um, it's, uh, I think the best thing we can do in these times of crisis and um, isolation or self-isolation is to communicate and to build bridges between all these isolations and precarious situations. We are in different sp places and spaces. Um, I understand the question as um, um, I will do first analysis and in a second row I will describe what we are doing here in Germany and especially in Frankfurt right now. And I'll start that uh, to tell you that H, uh, the protests of 8 March were the last large demonstrations we saw here in Germany. Um, thousands of women and LGBTIQ persons were on the streets in uh, most uh, larger cities. Um, before we had a couple of um, demonstrations mostly against the swing um, against the political trend to the right. Uh, of course, uh, you for sure you heard about the racist uh, attack here in Hanau, uh, 20 kilometers from Frankfurt. This, all, of course, all of us in the feminist scene especially shocked us. And we're, uh, we're political um, yeah, uh, awake in these times. And this um, marked uh, somehow our protests on March 8th as well. Um, after March 8th, uh, quickly the number of corona infection was on the rise and all major um, events were cancelled. And now, since about uh, three and a half weeks, all schools, nurseries and universities are closed until they say mid of April, but it's not sure if it's mid of April or any date later. Um, citizens shall, shall, shall stay at home since two and a half weeks in Germany rules a so-called contact ban to limit social interaction. And this contact ban means that public gatherings of more than two persons uh, are banned throughout Germany. Exceptions are made only for families and people living in the same household. Uh, women are hit hard by the crisis. Childcare is restricted only for people having relevant jobs for the system. As a consequence, a lot of parents, and of course, especially women, care for their children at home, often without the possibility to balance this with their jobs. Another large share of workers work in home office, often while caring for the kids. And of course, uh, you cannot uh, work as you're used to while caring for the kids, especially if you have young kids. Um, as most retail stores, shops, malls, hotels, restaurants, bars, clubs, cultural institutions, facilities are closed, we see a rise of unemployment and sh short-time work, and especially in retail and gastro gastronomy, of course, many women work. The so-called Kurzarbeitergeld, short-time allowance, is now um, made um, may, uh, apply uh, and now about um, 600 50,000 companies applied for so-called uh, short-time allowance for their workers. That means that they then workers will get only 60 or 67 percent of their net income. Uh, in combination with the G German spouse splitting tax, this is especially devastating for women that predominantly are the ones with the poorer incomes in this relation. Another problem is that these payment compensations, for example, are not taken into account for the calculation of parental allowance. Um, well, women who do care work at home are made invisible in this whole crisis. Um, this is, for example, also the reason why um, you only hear male politicians uh, in the media or uh, male authors uh, writing commentaries uh, uh, comments in the in the newspapers because mostly women are doing the care work at home um, the so-called system systematic uh, systemically relevant jobs are in the focus now and 70 percent of them are women um, and I think this is a chance for us from the feminist movement now uh, that we can well, we have a political opportunity now to insist on the relevant on these jobs running our societies and to pressure for better wages and employment conditions in these jobs. 
because they are now in the focus. Uh, the hospitals are in focus. And uh, of course, the, the, the stores, uh, the supermarkets are in focus as well. Uh, with the, 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 the women on the, in the cashiers not uh, having proper money. Um, as, especially uh, for the nursing sector, for years, uh, we're from the feminist movement, but unions as well, we're, we're trying to shed light to the so-called nursing crisis. Now it's the perfect time to, to pressure exactly on this issue. Um, of course, in the overall uh, economy, we do expect a long and hard recession. Um, and we have to shed light to the, to the consequences, especially for women and their um, economic situation. But also we have further have to address the topics, uh, especially safe abortion or safe birth. Um, the excess of safe abortion is problematic. Probably it was not openly communicated if an abortion is a necessary medical intervention. Um, and how the access to the counseling that you have to undergo by law here in Germany um, can be guaranteed on time. Of course, an abortion can be postponed for months. Of course not. Um, and this is our, our um, it's a situation we have to, 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 to sensibilize for and to, to make pressure for it. Um, it was just three weeks ago when I uh, was uh, with the gynecologist here in, at my town, at my city, and she told me he cannot do any abortions because they have no more uh, material for disinfection anymore. Uh, and this is, of course, a problem a lot of people do not have in mind when you're, they are thinking about the crisis of the health system right now. Um, so the clinics that do outpatient surgeries have no material and some hospitals, for example, do not allow a accompanying persons for in the delivery room to, um, due to the crisis in the hospitals, I expect a rise of violent during birth situations and a rise of the quote of C-sections as well. Uh, you already mentioned the situation of the, uh, the problem of dom domestic violence. Uh, we um, constantly address the problem that we do not have enough places in women's shelters in Germany and this, uh, the access is a big problem right now. Another question um, that is not really on the media right now is the question of how to protect the most vulnerable. Everybody is uh, now um, uh, insisting on the question of solidarity in society with slogans like stay at home means solid being solid uh, being a solidaric person. Solidarity means stay at home. But what about the homeless? What about the situation of sex workers? What about the situation of migrants? And um, for example, of uh, the refugees in camps in Germany, but also in camps on the European outer border. Um, for us, an important question is how can political action looks like in these times of repression when political action is officially somehow forbidden as every public gathering is forbidden. It's, it's difficult for us only to be to protest on the social media, for example. So here, this is one of the main topics for us in the feminist networks we are discussing right now, which forms we can find. And later on, I will describe a situation we experienced here in Frankfurt last, last weekend. Uh, about the uh, topic of access strategy, I uh, want to shed light that uh, today Chancellor Merkel gave a press statement that explained that care will take place through distance. Um, that the society had to learn to live with the virus as long as there is no vac uh, vaccination, vaccination. She explained that she cannot imagine that school or childcare institutions won't run in the way as we knew as all, as all sectors of society will have to live with a contact ban and the command of distance. We all know what this means for women. We know that the command of distance means that for a long time, all ideas we have in mind for care or for, so, uh, for organizing and also of political action will take place under completely different circumstances and will, be, will set the situation for women in a devastating way. Um, the current crisis is linked 
bear the extreme injustices and inequalities of our, our economic and social system. And I would say now we are in a way of a battle of visions of how we're going to respond to this crisis. As we heard uh, Chancellor Merkel saying is, it's the, the idea is care through distance. I think from the feminist perspective, the answer should be another. Um, the question is, will we either be catapulted to backward? And my, 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 my impression right now, it's somehow an idea of women living in times of the 1960s or 1950s in, in, in the, the sexual um, um, division of labor. Or will this be a wake-up call, a wake-up call for us feminists as well, uh, as well that are now in a situation if we're well organizing and finding ways of having a joint political expression to, to, to somehow change the course as it is set now with all the people in government trying to manage it. So this for analysis and later on I'm saying something about what we're doing here in Turkey. Thank you. Um, it would be great if you just like uh, keep going on what you are doing in uh, Frankfurt because then we can uh, like debate all together about um, like our practices. I do, thank you. Um, of course, we try, uh, we're finding new ways of communication and articulations. It was uh, directly after March 8th that we are not uh, had the possibility to, to see each other again. Uh, so it was uh, telephone communication and conferences and now uh, video conferences. Um, but we are constantly working. Um, one of our main actions was uh, last Sunday when we were supporting and taking part in an action of the so-called Seabridge, an organization that is uh, organized decentralized, uh, but also on the federal national level uh, and pre uh, pressuring for the, um, for the situation of uh, refugees uh, in the Mediterranean and of uh, refugees right now living in the camps on the Greek islands and uh, finding shelters for them and safe passage for them. And uh, we were around uh, 500, 500 activists uh, that showed up individually, but with collective expression here at the, uh, at the, at the river of the mine to protect against the European migration policy and the situation in the refugee camps in the Greek islands. And um, with actions like this, we are trying to figure out how political resistance can be expressed in times of the corona crisis and the so-called contact ban. Uh, public gatherings are forbidden. They were telling us that the uh, fundamental right of um, public gathering to protest is not uh, uh, that the, the, the act of protesting wouldn't be allowed anymore right now. Uh, but there were so funny scenes that there was, uh, that the police were telling us, if you're putting up here your, uh, your protest sign, you can still be here and enjoy the sun. So we're trying to figure out which way of um, being there is accepted and which, which not. So different uh, forms of, um, of, of, of being um, resistant in the public sphere and visible for us and for the media um, to, to, to protest. Um, the authorities are now of the opinion that due to the law of protection from infections, all demonstrations and, and all public meetings are illegal, but uh, there are is a vivid legal discussion if this is legal anyway. And uh, I, I'm sure after we got some um, response uh, from, from, um, from, from lawyers, from the, 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 the public media, that there will be, that we will find ways of uh, legal protests in the next weeks. 
as we find the uh, yeah the, the the gaps of definitions in the in the rules they make. Um, we are now uh, preparing a public action with another group group and hospital staff to scandalize the speculation in the public health se sector. Um, um, we're building contact and networks to women's shelters and, uh, to build a local practice of solidarity. And we're discussing different strategies to make the invisible care work and the situation of women at home visible. Um, the situation in Germany is a bit uh, different to the situations in Italy or in, in Chile, where uh, the feminist strike movement has a longer uh, history and is much more institutionalized in, uh, than in Germany. Um, the feminist strike mobilization in the past two years was, uh, from my perspective, quite uh, successful. It was two times in a row in uh, March 8th where we saw a lot of people, a lot of uh, women and LGBTQ people on the street, but um, the organization is uh, decentralized. Uh, it's a, a bit slow in the nationwide coordination and there are only a very few people active in those organizing between groups. Um, so that in accordance with this uh, situations we do have right now, it takes time to get coordinated and effectively political visible on a nation, national or even international level. Um, I'm quite happy that we do have national lobbying organizations on different um, sectors. And in, the, in between the, the organizations uh, on the local ground are preparing uh, local actions. And I think my group here in Frankfurt is quite good in doing so as we are constantly working right now. Um, yeah, just before we started with our video conference, the, our video conference from the Frankfurt group uh, ended, and I just got the protocol, and they are, yeah, good work. Good job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, as I don't see any uh, questions, um, I just wanted to raise um, some. Um, I was wondering, like that, you were talking about um, like actions as we know them, like going out and helping people. And one of them was um, Javiera talking about structures for women in um, violent situations at home. I mean, that's. Um, a problem you all mentioned and um, like Daniela said there is no there are not enough shelter spaces at the moment it's even worse um, like we see the rise of uh, violent uh, partner um, partners in, uh, in confinement so uh, my, my first question would be how exactly works uh, does it work to go out and help women when the police is still in the street and uh, where where can they go so what what are the the steps taken for that from the feminist movement and um the other the other question would be on because all of you mentioned um online campaigns and i mean that's uh, very obvious as we are at home and we are at the computer all day long. But um, I was all, I'm, I'm all the time wondering right now if how we can reach other people if, if we still, um, if we just keep in our like social media bubbles. And I mean, it was so forceful um, going out to the street with all the women on 8th of March and no one could overlook us. And how is it now? How we can like reach people who normally don't listen in those times through um, online communication? And I would um, also sneak in the, the question for the second round as I think it's... Um, it's easier to do it um, as a round again. Um, like you were talking about the respective uh, situations in your countries. And now 
I would also include the question on in the initiatives on a on an international level and um, what are your expectations? Why do we need it? Um, how does it work? Um, like in situations where we are so far away from each other, as it seems, um, how do we organize on an international level and why? Um, I would um, just do the, the same round. So I would um, give the word to Alessandra. Okay. Great. Thank you. Well, actually, uh, of course, uh, the, the, the the way we were used to have our uh, political initiative has been has been uh, being challenged by the current situation of social social isolation and also of uh, uh, the. Um, the restriction on the, 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 the enforcement uh, to, to, to stay uh, to stay home and not to, to together or to have uh, any kind of uh, um, of uh, meetings in presence uh, but uh, um, of course uh, um, the, 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 the anti-violence uh, centers uh, uh, in Italy uh, were, um, have a, a long uh, feminist tradition. They come from the feminist movement. Um, are, go, are trying to uh, to give uh, the, the the necessary support to to, to women. Uh, but of course, the, the current situation of the lack we have in these uh, shelters, in these in these places in which uh, women and can stay is also um, is also a consequence of the of the government cuts uh, economic cuts uh, on on uh, on the um, on, um, in the funds in in, in, in funding them. Uh, so what uh, is suggested to do is uh, and we are trying to give uh, uh, as much as possible visibility and um, support to the, the to let this uh, this practice. Be uh, as much uh, uh, known as possible, um, in order to use, for example, uh, the moments in which you are allowed to go out to call uh, these numbers, or, for example, um, using uh, uh, some. Uh, um, some strategy, you know, like uh, going uh, going outside to go out, to go to. Um, um, to, to the supermarket or going, uh, uh, of course, we had some uh, uh, some good uh, um, some good uh, uh, news about, uh, for example, in some uh, uh, regions uh, that we, that were like uh, um, uh, measures in order to allow the woman who is a victim of bio, of male violence uh, to stay actually in the in the um, in the house. That is uh, shared. So uh, banning the man immediately, not uh, not uh, uh, waiting for the response, you know, for the the process, but just when there is this uh, uh, this kind. Of, this is maybe <laughs> a, a possibility, an opportunity to to. Um, to go on in terms of the online campaigns of of course i can uh, perfectly understand what they are talking about i um it is something that of course is not uh, an easy an easy answer uh, but at the same way i think that what we have been, have been doing uh, during uh, during the last he during the last years has not been like a, a kind of the production of mobilization. Uh, many times we have been uh, like uh, um, supporting uh, what was going on at the attention and the uh, political um, the political support and and uh, to let this uh, uh, and to to give visibility, but also to read what was going on, and not as a, uh, a simple um, individual or a specific uh, um, issue, but something that was um, 
the work that must be uh, comprehended in a wider way, the, the way we uh, we have been reading what is the feminist strike. So, like uh, putting together and considering as a, um, as a, a different sides of the same thing, the fact, for example, of um, of the, the the problem of reproductive labor, but also the uh, but also uh, the, the question of institutional racism, how this this higher Hierarchies uh, are uh, profoundly connected. For example, in the in the in the global chains of care, the exploitation of uh, um, of uh, uh, migrant uh, uh, women in the, in the care work. Um, um, so, um, of course, uh, for, for now, the, the the possibility of doing uh, politics in like pol political meetings or demonstration is not possible. It's <laughs> simple, uh, it's simple something that we also uh, uh, decided not to have before there was an enforcement of law in Italy because of the, of the responsibility of not putting people at risk of being contagious in this situation. But this, at the same time, we cannot, we cannot not consider, but consider that um, there are people who are actually going uh, forced to go to work and and they are uh, they are uh, bringing uh, forth their their um, their sometimes individual sometimes not individual struggle and so how to uh, to to read it in a, uh, in a in the very process that uh, the women strike has opened uh, <laughs> has opened uh, now um, a few years uh, few years ago and uh, so uh, for us uh, um, as i was saying before it was just uh, like a way um, to understand how uh, the the women strike and also non una di meno and the other uh, political uh, networks that uh, tried uh, that we <laughs> that actually um, Try to give um, to give a, uh, an orga organizational organizational infrastructure to this to this um, to, 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 to the strike to, to the women's strike has been anticipating many of uh, the issues we are uh, we are facing today and one of these it is the transnational uh, plan of initiative. We uh, we understood like um, uh, since the beginning that it was not possible uh, on the one on the one hand to face the um, the attack the neoliberal and patriarchal and racist attack we have to face without considering is a transnational plane of uh, action that uh, actually integrate uh, integrates uh, the 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 different the differences the the, the um, of the countries of governments of uh, authoritarian or like uh, uh, <laughs> Um, left uh, uh, oriented government uh, but at the same time also how the, the level of um, the, the, the challenge is also to uh, uh, understand how the women on um, move and uh, they actually uh, put in uh, um, in question this uh, this uh, um, this this idea of what is the transnational um, of the enemy, we can say, no, the transnational dimension of the enemy. So how uh, uh, it is not possible to uh, counteract uh, to this uh, current situation, especially without taking into consideration that we, uh, even if we have seen different ways of facing it, like uh, the, the strategy of denial, uh, denial of uh, Boris Johnson or the, the, the way in which uh, uh, other countries uh, faced it like in a very quick way, but, or uh, for example, um, but uh, also uh, trying to um, to uh, to focus on the common grounds that that actually. Uh, um, 
unifying, um, see our experiences are unified. For example, the way in which women in this situation are under under attack of both uh, uh, of both uh, epi uh, pandemic, but al but also the patriarchal attack on their care work and uh, on their um, on their. Um, very very freedom sexual freedom for example or or freedom or freedom of abortion and uh, at the same time um, uh, well the the yes how uh, it is not possible uh, to um, not to see how the the way in which women have understood the strike so if our lives uh, don't uh, don't work with strike and what uh, uh, javiera was uh, saying uh, to, i i suppose uh, talking about the uh, strikes for life like uh, uh, we cannot uh, we cannot put at risk our very uh, possibility of uh, of uh, of the reproduction of our lives uh, because of profit but at the same time uh, shows how the <clears throat> Shows how uh, the we are not just uh, um, for us is not enough uh, to um, uh, just a survival strategy to have a survival strategy. How striking for life is not just a defensive uh, um, a defense. Of course, it is. Of course, it is for many for many people strike uh, in order not to uh, not be forced to work in, uh, without the necessary uh, protections, uh, PPE or uh, things like that, uh, but uh, uh, or to put in, in uh, at risk in uh, non uh, non uh, distancing uh, situation uh, in in the workplaces. But at the same time, is also what are the condition in which we are. Uh, living our lives, like uh, uh, under what kind of oppression? So we want to strike for our lives to be uh, not just to be alive, but also to be free and to uh, be self-determined and not to be exploited under the capitalistic uh, um, as a system of exploitation. And so, if I have, um, uh, yeah. And so for us, it was uh, uh, really important uh, uh, to have uh, the opportunity to share this perspective, especially in this specific situation with the other, um, with other comrades, families comrades from uh, different countries. And uh, so the opportunity of having this, uh, this plan of, uh, even if, uh, since the, uh, as I, uh, I was saying, since the beginning, we recognized it as uh, like we organized the, the transnational dimension of the women's strike. But of course, it was uh, that like um, uh, a political discourse in our, in our initiative, but we didn't have the opportunity to have this uh, strong and, uh, um, and uh, weekly <laughs> um, opportunity to confront with other with other with other with the, the, the comrades from other countries and so uh, um, if, i don't know if uh, i can say now or maybe uh, in another uh, in the in the next uh, round but what we are actually doing is yeah now okay okay um so uh, we are um now uh, making a step forward uh, in uh, in our in, in our political initiative um, and uh, it is uh, um, under the under the initiative of uh, uh, chilean comrades this uh, this transnational um, transfronterizas uh, um, meeting uh, like network of of confrontation with and through uh, transnational uh, sky Calls, in which uh, the, the 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 next steps what we was um, considered um, 
very important to stress was uh, the, the need of a um, common political framework in which uh, all the differences that of course cannot be erased uh, uh, the, the, there are like local specificities and and uh, different conditions but at the same time in order to yeah to allow this um, uh, to allow this uh, um, this space, this political space, uh, to be something uh, capable of threatening uh, even our uh, local initiatives, even our uh, um, specific uh, political initiatives. And so, uh, what um, we have been uh, discussing is uh, uh, the, um, the, the publication of a uh, manifesto. Uh, that uh, uh, reads capable of reading this uh, this pandemic not just in terms of an emergency, but how like the, this emergency that of course there is an emergency uh, is um, deeply rooted in the in the in the world we didn't didn't want to uh, to. Um, to have any more <laughs> that we wanted to transform, and at the same time, is also something that is giving um, uh, giving shape to what the world will be after it. So, in this in this uh, time of transition, we want to underline uh, what what is our role of uh, um, of uh, in, in terms of struggle or, or, or autonomous struggle and so the um, the um, the, what is uh, what is being recognized uh, not, not just in the manifesto but also in the need of having a, a, a transnational day of struggle on the May Day, uh, a feminist May Day, um, is exactly uh, not in terms of like. Uh, um, Finding an addition, finding a list of our, on an addition of different specificities of, of, on, on a local base that would be um, uh, a reproduction of the uh, fragment, uh, fragmentation we face every day, we face in our political initiative. But we want exactly to to go uh, beyond, to to go beyond it, and to build this um, to. to to publish this this document in order to show how uh, our connection is something not um, occasion, uh, occasional but is uh, uh, structural to our political initiative and so uh, we have common grounds of struggle and we want to uh, put them at the very uh, at the very center of the political of the um, radical political initiative and so of course this these common grounds can be identified as the connection between the production and social reproduction, considering the social reproduction not just the um, understanding the social reproduction not just as the, the, the reproductive labor or care or care work, but the very reproduction of, of neoliberal uh, society that, that uh, reproduce hierarchies that are based on gender based and race based and based on uh, on class. And uh, uh, also to um, to give uh, to give a visibility of the role played in this uh, global society, neoliberal society, uh, played by patriarchal violence. So how it is, uh, as the, the Chilean case shows, shows us very, very well, how it is a form of discipline imposed on women and on their, um, on their insubordinacy. Sub, sub, <laughs> Insubordination. <laughs> yeah. and uh, in subordination um, and also um, yeah to, 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 to give visibility to all the struggles that are going on that maybe are not um, are not visible but they are uh, actually in the very um, in the very far uh, um, in the very um, they they just start throughout society and and uh, uh, are shaking are shaking uh, uh, it and uh, um, give them give to them the visibility and give to them uh, also the um, the political uh, um, framework in which we can also open new fields probably 
mm, give space for new struggle to come, for new uh, uh, spaces of revolts to to uh, to come in uh, in the future. So uh, I think <laughs> this may be the yeah. This has been. I don't know if uh, uh, if I uh, left uh, anything, uh, but um, yeah. Um, yeah, I think um, Javier can just like um, connect to this directly if I can. Ah, very good. Thanks a lot. Javier? Yes. Um, well, I'm going to try to answer uh, your questions. Um, about the domestic violence, and as I was saying before, we are working on these. Um, Networks, feminist networks of a mutual aid and care to try to think of strategies of how to confront, uh, as we said, the, the rise of gender violence in this context. And we're working on it in, a, in various levels. It's important for us to think of how we can work these alliances between, for instance, historical feminist NGOs from Chile with a territorial and neighborhood collectives of feminists who are actually working in confronting this in their uh, daily on a daily basis between um, neighbors and we are we've been working on this um, to think uh, strategies that we can uh, start in this context but maybe we can also project in a, in in the future and to think of new uh, feminist um, strategies uh, that we can um, we can start imagining and actually putting into practice this during these months, but uh, might be helpful in the future as well. And for this, we've worked uh, in this in this um, in uh, we we've been working in a feminist toolbox and uh, that we can with different with things just such as uh, in an educational level, uh, how to recognize this violence in our neighbors, how to confront it if it's occurring to us. Uh, and we are in, there's this um, feminist network that is called Red Chilena Contra La Violencia, a Chilean uh, network against uh, violence to women. And they've worked in, in this, um, a very interesting uh, toolbox that you can actually not only use in digital uh, forms of uh, spreading, but also to paste it out outside our houses. So we can also help to, uh, even with our neighbors, you can actually see it when you paste it uh, outside our houses or buildings. We're also working on this uh, mapping of um, host places in, every, in different uh, regions of our country in, every, in different cities um, to help, of course, uh, women who need a shelter, a place to go in case they are in need in this context. So there's also this work on mapping all of these different initiatives uh, and grassroots initiatives that uh, can be helpful uh, during these days. And uh, we are also working on having more um, and like being able to have like a feminist autonomous call centers that can also be uh, to attend uh, moments of crisis to different women. So we're actually working on in this uh, in these very days uh, on the architecture of all of this plan. We are uh, going to most probably being able to public uh, publicly um, share this this uh, weekend. And Precisely because we know that domestic violence is something that's always in a way being shaded, but nowadays in isolation, uh, the chances of uh, making it be even more a private matter is for us a very major issue and how we can um, never let go the, the um, importance of bringing light to something that is uh, usually trying to be held um, to a, as a private matter. Um, and about the in terms of the political protests and collective action during uh, these days, we are also uh, working in two major initiatives. As we said, uh, the idea of a, a strike uh, for the life uh, is just as um, Alessandra was saying, idea of uh, how we put our lives as a public and as a political problem, a political issue. 
uh, life in, in, and the idea of uh, think of our, of our life not just in a survival, of course, um, content, but of how we can um, struggle for for our dignity of life uh, of our lives of our of the majority of women uh, and of, of for the majority of, of the population and of course of women uh, in this context and how how can we think of um, strategies that can lead to think uh, this crisis in a more rooted uh, they mentioned and also how can we think they respond and the uh, solutions we can think of to, for this emergency in a more and in a projection of a new and other forms of organizing our life uh, as a whole and in, in, and that of course leads to a question that for us very interesting is how can we start to to ask ourselves of in a very deep uh, manner just as the revolt did here in Chile that uh, that was of course a revolt against neoliberalism. So how can we also uh, try to connect what our present revolt can be against the forms of precarious and uh, neoliberal uh, neoliberal uh, measures of the government against this crisis in a form to uh, start to anticipate and um, uh, and give a, an actually anti-neoliberalist and anti-capitalist response to this moment and to the and to a possible future. Uh, so then the strikes in a uh, just to give some idea of how how what are we talking about when we say strike in this content? We are thinking of just as we as we did in the uh, with the idea of a feminist strike in a very imaginative way, not just like in a traditional form of strike, of course. But we're also thinking of ways of interrupting the uh, people who uh, the spaces of work for people who are forced to go to work in this context. So we're working with some unions who are actually trying to make different strategies to interrupt the um, uh, the day of the working day in the in different places. Or 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 uh, we're working also with alliances with people who work from unions of the transport. Uh, uh, public transport, for instance, to help, to try to being able to make this um, articulation with alliances with whom are working nowadays in places that cannot stop, and also with, uh, of course, uh, working with domestic workers unions and um, uh, health workers as well. And well, those the, that is the idea of. Uh, and the different forms of strike. We're also working on strikes, uh, saying that we, for example, signs uh, outside are outside our houses, or the idea of giving us moment during the day to uh, make these cacerolazos that was I was telling before. And in, uh, an interesting part of that is how we can um, um, try to create forms of protest in this context, and how that also is in a way. Um, um, it responds also to the forms that are the the government is actually asking people to express during these days. We had like this very interesting um, confrontation between the our government that was asking for people to applaud to um, health workers in this context, and we were saying okay. And then the unions of health workers were saying we don't need any we don't need applauses. We need a, a basic um, Items and also we need the protest to continue and to be and people to be civilized that uh, the poor conditions in which they are uh, um, responding to the crisis in hospitals. So then uh, the idea was that and then it's interesting how the cacerolazos and this like um, banging of the cans was like opposed to the applaud as a, this like official manner of expressing during the. Uh, during isolation. That's a, like an interesting thing that happened there. And um, we are also working on, a, we have a brigade, uh, like an artistic brigade of, coordin of the Coordinadora, that's called Laura Rodic. And the, the brigade was, uh, since uh, last year, always been thinking of, of um, creative ways of uh, occupying the public sphere. So then how, the major question now is how to do that in this context, of course. So then from that 
we've been working on some ideas such as the projection with data uh, from our houses to the outside, from our windows to the outside, to in a way try to uh, intervene the, the, the streets. And that was done for a, a day that was the 29th of March. That is a day of memory here in Chile uh, in honor for uh, people who were, young uh, people uh, that were um, killed during the dictatorship. And uh, we are also working on ideas of how to mark the streets on our daily, on the, the, when we go for instance to buy food or to pharmacies on strategies to, to try to use even those uh, little moments that we're actually occupying the streets to intervene them as well. Like not, uh, not stop doing that, even in those like uh, specific moments. And, um, and now, well, of, about the question on how to, on this international level of initiatives, of course for us, and it's been a, a major question for, for, for us uh, since, uh, especially during this year, we are making this effort, and well, Alessandra already uh, talked a lot about that, about the um, trans uh, fronterizas, which is a, an idea of how the feminist movement must have an internationalist uh, perspective, and also it has a part, internationalist uh, um, pot potency that I guess uh, uh, not many other movements in this moment have. So for us, it was like a, a respons political responsibility to think common, uh, a common political framework and a common political actions that we can um, start to, to, to identify and start, of course, a debate that for us is very important to recognize that we are also having different um, political perspectives as feminists. So it's important like, to understand our own diversity and from then on start to think of how, what we can do together. How can we, for instance, uh, respond to this moment as well as we have responded before with the uh, feminist strike, which is of course like a very, um, um, like something that already, um, I guess, is the main, most important evidence of our internationalist um, capacity to do things together and to understand how can uh, the feminist movement respond to a moment of a major crisis that, of course, is before than this and uh, has to do with the crisis of the politic, the production and reproduction of, of our societies nowadays. So. Well, we're working on the, this idea of manifesto. We're working on a, a periodical uh, forms of uh, debates between ourselves. And we are also working on how to connect initiatives from, from very um, different contexts and how to uh, help us also to visibilize uh, local context, contents. So then how to make uh, situated, but also related actions between ourselves. Um, so I guess that's, of course, a, a major question for us in a, a, in a debate like this, to think, of course, as well, how what can we um, transform the ways we understand internationalism? And it's not the internationalism of the 60s, and why not? And what can we uh, use from those experiences? What we have to rethink in now, nowadays? How can we rethink internationalism in a context of uh, post-colonial perspective on how to think it, uh, in the context of recognizing different nations that live in different country, in one country, um, how can we understand all those, uh, and how can the feminist movement change as well, uh, uh, and be and project, yes, uh, an internationalist change in this uh, moment. Thank you very much. Um, I will just give the word to Daniela and um, saying that we are slightly running out of time. So um, it would be good if you could um, also answer to the question on um, like um, the need or uh, the, the reasons for a new internationalism as uh, Javiera was um, also saying but um what yeah here um and to um like as we are running out of time to end the the debate as well i just wanted to ask every one of you to have 
like one very, very, very short um, like input on how can people that see um, this debate and see the video later, how can they get involved if they are not already part of an organization? So. Okay, I'll start with the question of women's shelters and uh, for strategies now to address this problem. Um, we uh, offer support to um, the women's shelters themselves um, and spreading uh, helpline numbers and etc. Uh, enc encouraging women uh, to look after each other and offering help and contact. Um, we're demanding funding um, in the political sphere uh, to, to better the funding of uh, women's shelters. Um, and the policy of uh, banning the man is now political, politically um, accepted in Germany, or at least in most, uh, in most cities. Uh, this is uh, my impression right now. And of course, we're pressuring for this, uh, especially if the strategy of um, uh, bringing um, the victims of domestic violence to hotel rooms, etc., is not a good practice uh, as they have uh, children, etc. It's uh, and, and no long-term perspective in a hotel room um, and no infrastructure of uh, caring for them. Um, to the, I think what is uh, really important right now in uh, the question of how and why organize an inter uh, on an international level is uh, this pandemic and the capital are working globally. <laughs> and it would be a pain in the ass for all of us if we're only uh, reacting uh, nationally uh, to the national policies we are uh, observing right now um, even our um, political leaders are now accepting that they have to act on a global market for uh, protection for gloves etc pp so uh, of course we should use all our powers and experience to fight uh, jointly this crisis and to fight for a feminist transformation of this policy of crisis um, i think uh, we're all all the situations we describe, we um, experience under different circumstances, but the problems are pretty similar to each other. And this is what we can identify as strength as well, because we develop different strategies and we can collect this dif uh, the different ideas and uh, approaches of uh, working um, and fighting, uh, at these, uh, fighting these problems. Um, I think what for, 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 for me is uh, one of the most interesting things is not only to, to um, go on the, um, the, the level of, um, of analysis and demands, because um, as I say, I think um, it's pretty similar to the ones we identified already, but to see uh, on, this, on the level of action, how the different approaches are now produced. Um, I heard of window protests, uh, collective noise action, projects and projections, street marks. Uh, we are trying to find the uh, uh, yeah, lacks um, of definition in the rules uh, to, to go on the streets as in, the, in the public sphere and to find ways of public expression. Um, interestingly, uh, just uh, couple of hours ago, even a motorcycle demonstration was forbidden. So not even uh, demonstrating by in a vehicle is allowed anymore. So it's, it's really tricky right now to find the ways of, of, uh, yeah, of political expression. Um, I think, of course, online mobilization is always a good thing, but we know how restricted ways like this are. And if we are one, uh, if we, and not all neighborhoods, for example, are um, reachable by public noise. If you're going on the uh, on the on the rural um, um, areas, um, noise is not that effective, of course. And so we we have to find and develop different structure, uh, structures and uh, and strategies. Um, I think this is the most important question for me: how to protest or to strike in times of crisis, how to build resistance to the um, 
policy of ma crisis management, especially because of, uh, I see a lot of um, repression and I, my uh, impression is that we will um, experience a swing to a much more authoritarian state than we do have experienced it in the, in the last years. And it will last for months and, or even for years. Um, and I'm pretty pessimistic uh, looking for the situation of women in the consequence. Um, and this is, the, I think, the most um, important thing where we should organize on all levels that are possible with a manifesto, with collective action, with collective action days, is, uh, and everything we can imagine. Um, how can people get active? Um, here in Frankfurt, on, uh, on mine, um, our feminist uh, strike group meets up every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. So uh, just write me a message, write us uh, via Facebook or whatever you would <laughs> want. And uh, you're, um, yeah, we're happy to, to invite and to meet new people in our network. And the next coordination film conference of the federal um, coordination will be on April 14th at 8 p.m. So, and there are new people welcome as well. And uh, we are, as I said, we are um, preparing different collective action things uh, for the things we are planning for the public sphere as everything is forbidden right now. We are not uh, doing this so uh, yeah, uh, publicly announced uh, and finding uh, different ways of communicating than uh, uh, you probably used. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. So I would uh, ask the other two as well, just very, very, very short, how can people get involved? Um, what do you think, Alessandra? Well, <clears throat> of course, uh, breaking uh, breaking the um, the isolation is the first step to take uh, in order to in order to to face the situation and to, to struggle within it. Um, il, uh, the, the, also, the, the the question is also um, trying not to. Um, I think one important thing is not consider like uh, that this pandemic. Uh, uh, arrives uh, like in a moment uh, of a uh, kind of void because uh, everything uh, that uh, we as feminist uh, uh, activists uh, have carried out so far uh, is um, sedimented and so it is not possible to to shut up or to to stop us <laughs> with the uh, with the same in the same way that was before that's why our our coordination and our um, communication is so important of course in Italy <laughs> talking about a local basis uh, they can um, be updated through uh, our um, Facebook pages and uh, Twitter and uh, YouTube about uh, all the initiatives that on a national and on a local level are being uh, um, are being carried uh, uh, carried on by the different uh, assembly. Uh, specifically, we in Catania <laughs> are uh, uh, meeting on a teleconference on a on a weekly basis uh, in order to, um, of course, uh, to to deal with the situation uh, both on trying to to, to put Put together the the um, and, and to uh, read what we are discussing on a transnational level. Also, how, how, also how, uh, how does it, it does it, um, affect this specificity of our of our city of our? Uh, for example, what uh, uh, Javier was was saying about the informal labor and the the. the um, the specific way in which women are particularly uh, ex uh, exploited in this uh, in this field is also something that in the southern part of Italy is uh, absolutely mm, understandable and uh, uh, widespread. So uh, I don't know if I, I may go on if you want, but I don't know. I don't want to. I would um, actually, I would give the last uh, word to Javiera as we are like uh, 10, 20 minutes over the time. 
Javiera okay. and Kat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Rosa, actually. <laughs> She's... <laughs> um, well, for us, I guess the major idea is how to, uh, to our struggle now is how to make that physical distance cannot be equivalent to a political and social isolation, and, and especially to a sense of uh, impotence in this moment. So I guess there's a very uh, intimate uh, struggle we do every day, but it's also the idea of how we can uh, keep on working on um, to, to maintain the social networks, the networks that we've been uh, creating in every uh, uh, place we um, we live in, not only in our works, in, with our, in our uh, neighbors, with our friends. For us, it's important to, to work on how to, to maintain those networks that are also, uh, that can help us to, to recognize that there's no way to, in, a, of, in a, an individual form of care. That's some of the politics of care nowadays has to be, how care must be a collective action. And, there's a very like intimate uh, response to that, and also a major and like a political uh, struggle in how we can work together now to identify and design the, our uh, feminist and uh, in anti-capitalist response to this crisis. So, for people who are actually watching and hearing us, I guess for of course there's this idea they can uh, hopefully read our social uh, med uh, 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 media and our. Facebook and our, every other uh, form of network, but of course, and especially I guess I, it's, this is a call out for every one of us to uh, be uh, to to keep on like uh, caring for others in our and in our more intimate uh, networks and and trying to different forms of protests that we can do in our daily life. We have to continue of making forms of making noise in every form possible and because we know and we here in Chile we've said it that the nor uh, normality was al always a problem so and that must be like uh, we have to continue on, on working on that and not uh, accept that this new and very exceptional normality uh, uh, that's disciplinizing, disciplinizing our <laughs> um, behaviors and it's being controlled in very and most more uh, in different forms, of course, digitally, uh, in, uh, physically. We have to work on how to respond to that, to respond to militarization, to respond to police action in this context, and to respond of to neoliberalist uh, actions of our, our government. So I guess mainly to, in every level of our day, uh, of our uh, possibilities to expand our networks locally and of course internationally. Thank you uh, very much. That was uh, very good closing remarks. Um, I thank you very much for being here and um, I hope we hear more from each other in the future and of course we will reach the Feminist revolution. That's that's as well. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here as well to everyone. Bye bye. Take care. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> bye, -bye. bye.